our final, hopefully final ever, uh, class from learning from home. Uh, so we are moving on to the next branch of management. We've looked at leading before, now we're looking at motivating. Um, so motivation is obviously something that we come across uh, on a daily basis. It's a willingness to do something. Work or exercise is what drives people and encourages them to achieve their goals. Again, something that's kind of I, I suppose you know standard enough that, that you come across on a daily basis um, there's two different theorists that we're going to be looking at for motivation and the first we have is Maslow's hierarchy of needs um, I would say there, there's a good chance you might have maybe seen this before um, if not then we'll go through it anyway so there's five different stages in Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs so it's a hierarchy so obviously uh, it being in the shape of a pyramid as well we're going to start at the bottom and that's what everybody requires from their work and then as we achieve the first base which is physiological we then look for safety once we have safety then we then have social once we have social we then go for self or we go for esteem and then uh, for self-actualization being our last one and you can see here there's details on the right as to what each stage means and obviously if i'm going for a job the very first thing i would require a job for is because obviously for my own i suppose physiological needs i have my um need for buying food uh for shelter and for warmth and you know uh, my basic living standards um if i don't have any work there's a potential that uh, my physiological needs wouldn't be uh, met after that obviously we go for the uh feeling safe and secure element generally again obviously it might be through the money you get that uh, you build, you know, you have yourself a house and, and, and multiple other things. Um, the next step would be social, I suppose. From a developed country standpoint, the bottom two stages are, are met quite easily uh, in most cases. And the third stage would be social, so that when we have a job that we would uh, hope for a social element of the job. So uh, friendships on the job. Uh, so the idea is obviously for the need for friendship and love. Um, I'm just trying to apply it to a job standpoint, a work standpoint, because it is business, but these would be kind of Maslow's hierarchy of needs would be kind of different a hierarchy for life, really. So our, our need for friendship and love would be our third one. Um, our fourth uh, and second last stage would be the need for a status, building up our own status, respect and appreciation, and the final one to be achieving to the best that we can be, what we would aim and aspire for, but providing we have all other areas in our life met first. So applying the whole hierarchy to the workplace so physiological needs is our first step um, we would hope from a job that we get a fair day's wage for what we do for our work um, and that obviously generally most of this comes down to money because we are looking for food and shelter uh, as our physiological needs um, so that's obviously our, our, our first kind of requirement from a job um, so the focus here, I suppose, is on getting a fair payment. Uh, the second one being safety, uh, that when we're on the job, that we're working in a safe environment, maybe that uh, we're covered under certain insurance insurance covers and that we have a long-term contract. So it's not a case that I can just show up to work on Monday and be told, that's it, you're done, go find another job. So um, after our first requirement of being paid so that we can have a you know basic standard of living the second thing we'd look from a job is that we have some form of long-term safety uh, whether safety in terms of the work environment of the job or safety isn't you know in terms of our career having some place to earn in the future once that the once that is met then we'd hope that we have a long-term contract in place that we're earning money and that the job working conditions are safe now we're looking for social we're looking for flexible arrangements, maybe so that, you know, there's certain hours of the week, generally it could be Saturday, Friday night, stuff like that, Sunday morning or whatever, that people uh, enjoy their social time. Uh, we would hope maybe to have a flexible arrangement that we would work those hours as little as possible, maybe, um, you know, that you work with people, work with teams, that you're involved in your own social events and work or outside of work and you're given time off to go to that. Um, so you can imagine that if you were in desperate desperate need of money and you were living on the street you know this is your real your your beginning block this is where you want to start um you're looking for money because of the uh you know physiological needs that you need met in your life your idea of food and shelter and, and everything else uh safety your long-term prospects that you'd hope again from a safety standpoint that you would have this money coming in on a long-term basis 
and that you will not be in any danger at your work and then after that once we're starting to get a little bit comfortable in the job that we're hoping that our job is social and that I suppose we're enjoying the time we work with people and that we have you know time outside of work as well to enjoy ourselves so our second last one is esteem needs so once that's met then we start looking more internally at ourselves, and we're looking for praise for the work that we do um, we're looking for a promotion in terms of a new job title um, or maybe something you know the whole trivial you can have your own office or your own parking space but when you're in a job these things are you know something that would be quite rewarding um, so again it's the next step but the latter you've you've a social experience at work and, and you have a, a social life outside of that and your work's not getting in the way for everything you've the first three elements of the hierarchy uh, is met and now you're on to esteem so now you want to feel good about the stuff you do basically it's your esteem you want to feel good about what you do with your work and then the final one is your self-actualization so self-actualization is basically that you achieve everything to the fullest of your ability and it is the most internal um, of these five different stages so a career plan and generally it's kind of something that you feel is you know your calling that kind of idea that this is what you feel most fulfilled in doing uh, providing training and development opportunities for employees employee empowerment so i suppose what i would say from self-actualization it's the idea that you know your 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 what you you know what really gets you going what what's most fulfilling for you the idea that you're giving back to people that you're that you're empowered you're you're confident that you're you're uh, you know in a sense achieving your your desires um and this is self-actualization it'd be the very last step so the idea is that once you start off here at the bottom and that you have all of your safety and food needs met um, and again this wouldn't just apply for you know we're applying it for business for the workplace this is just general life too but if you're living in the streets you don't really care that much about your whole uh life ambitions and desires from a kind of a materialistic standpoint you're just focusing on getting by and then once we have that and we have our food and we have our shelter and now we're looking for a bit more security in our life once we have that we start looking more towards companions friends and uh relationships or, or, or love through family or something like that um again through a work environment it would just basically being social with the people that you're working with after that we're looking more for i suppose esteem needs uh the need to feel appreciated uh whether it's in your work or outside of work and the very last step then is after i suppose that we're looking for appreciation for the stuff that we do we are looking to achieve our biggest desires our self-actualization uh, achieving your full potential and be the best you can be um it would be the the end goal and it's the end of maslow's or hierarchy of needs so <clears throat> advantages from the i suppose from a, the, the hierarchy uh, advantages from a rewards it recognized that people are motivated by more than money which is very true because obviously there is a lot of people that will choose a career based on this final step here this is what they feel that they can contribute most to the world most to the world um, rather than this is what can get me the most money so maslow's theory our hierarchy of needs recognizes that people are motivated by more than money um, they're motivated by job titles uh, working in teams praise training and career development opportunities it's changing employees needs maybe over time we're looking for more recognition more awards um, used to motivate individuals at a different stage of their career generally maybe towards pension or job title or anything like that and management positions training and developing opportunities prepares employees for future management uh, developing them up along the ladder uh, disadvantages of maslow's hierarchy of needs assumes that people are motivated by the same things at every step of the career uh, which isn't the case obviously some people have a completely different approach some people's idea of self-actualization is to be uh, filthy rich and driving a ferrari whereas other people might feel like they're making a difference to the environment around them so um, it does differ for each person it does not consider that people have different motivations at different stages of their life as well maybe that materialistic thing might be there at your younger age but from an older age standpoint it might just be the effect you have on those around you uh, self-actualization varies from person to, person to person which is more or less kind of i suppose the same thing as what i said above uh business may find it difficult to motivate employees at this level of the hierarchy because usually it kind of comes from internal it's it's kind of what you want what you feel is 
is what self uh, self actualization is to you and the value of needs not all needs may be of equal value for employees one employee may value esteem needs above safety needs and you'd find that too with some people for their career that um, even I suppose in in some whether it be uh, sports careers that would err on the, the side of danger or, or you know even someone in a professional stunt career or anything like that clearly their uh, whole safety around their working conditions isn't too fantastic but they may be delighted with their esteem needs um, so obviously there are people out there that are uh, working in extremely dangerous jobs even something like and working in an oil rig and you know northern canada or, or working off scandinavia or somewhere in the us or something like that there you're you're working in somewhere where or not an oil rig in scandinavia but you're working in in a dangerous environment um and safety mightn't be really met but you might feel uh your esteem needs might be met in, in some other case uh so that's our final uh value of needs um the McGregor's theory, just to, to go through this as well, uh, again, this is a short enough chapter, but it does come up every now and then, and generally the answers are, the questions aren't too difficult. Uh, not Conor McGregor, but Douglas McGregor's theory X and theory Y. So Douglas McGregor wrote a book on the two different viewpoints of a manager. So there are two extremes. Theory X is autocratic leadership. Theory Y is democratic. So theory X is your whole strict boss, do everything by the books. And democratic is the whole involving people as much as possible. The optimal management approach would be somewhere between the two. Theory Y is very trusting. Theory X is um, somebody who feels like nobody wants to do the work for them and they have to force them. So this is our Theory X. As you can see from the photo, the guy who's screaming is probably the manager. Believes that the employees dislike work. They avoid taking responsibility. They lack ambition and they are only motivated by money. So that's our Theory X manager. And obviously it's quite a cynical approach. Um, and that they feel like they need to be supervising on top of employees and constantly telling them what to do in order to get results. That's your Theory X manager and um, obviously there are many managers that would take that style of approach. And then you have your Theory Y manager believes that employees like working and are willing to work hard, that employees want to take on additional responsibility and duties, that they're ambitious and they're motivated by financial and non-financial rewards. So your theory why manager is your empowering manager. Obviously much less time here is spent on supervising and there's much more time given to, much more uh, delegation work taking place in the business. Um, so obviously we've looked at the idea and we just have a couple of more, just three more slides just to look through. Uh, we've looked at Theory X and we've looked at Theory Y from McGregor. Um, the advantages of this McGregor's theory for what motivates people is for Theory Y recognizes that employees work better when trusted with responsibility. Um, this increases motivation levels among staff. So obviously if you're trusting people that you're building them up. Um, recruitment and selection, again, obviously from a positive standpoint, we're looking at Theory Y because it's much more positive. A positive work environment attracting high quality employees and reduced labor turnover google is the most sought after career in um <clears throat> that you can i suppose it, it's it's the company that has the most job offers coming in in ireland consistently every single year by far and uh, there's thousands and thousands of people that apply to work in google every year and if you don't know why youtube what it's like to work for google there's a lot, a lot of benefits. They really do uh, aim to provide as much as social and self-esteem experience as possible. Uh, high, you know, high self, high esteem and high social experience in that line of work. And they're very much theory why management and that they trust their employees and they give them a lot of responsibility and everybody generally tends to collaborate quite well. So it's quite a high appealing job and it attracts high quality employees reduced labor turnover there's not many people that would quit on a year-to-year -year basis compared to maybe uh, your general factory job <clears throat> and improved industrial relations obviously if you're trusting everybody and everything's kind of going on uh, everyone's kind of getting on I suppose uh, from regular communication it helps to improve the relationship industrial relations is the relationship between the employer and the employee so obviously it's a much more positive relationship uh, from the disadvantages of McGregor's theory X and Y it's unrealistic to take a pure approach so it's unrealistic for somebody to be constantly autocratic and constantly barking at the employees and expecting that they're not doing any work 
um, and it's unrealistic to be too uh, much to theory why is well aware that you trust your employees 24 7 with everything that they do uh, managers uh, generally use both aspects of both theories and that would be the recommended approach i suppose the again you're more looking at disadvantages you're generally looking at theory x the employees tend to be unhappy because the manager is constantly barking at them giving instructions in you know your general high staff turnover which is your you know the idea that you take on the job for a couple of months until you get a bit of earnings and then you leave and, and that there may be a lot of factory work where people would do that that basically high staff turnover a lot of people generally tend to quit uh, and there's higher recruitment costs costs that go into that and less entrepreneurship because obviously you're not giving the employees much uh, control so there's very few of them they're going to come forth with their ideas and obviously it's important as well to hear more ideas than just your own so they're less likely to share ideas than use the theory for a theory x style manager um, it can lead to lower quality products from for consumers the very last slide so the importance of motivation and i've gone through this quite quickly i will touch on it again down the line um, but there's not a whole lot to the chapter so what are the importance of motivation so improve productivity uh, generally if you can motivate your staff they generally are more productive there's less staff turnover less staff people quitting less absenteeism obviously there's generally more willingness to come to work because they enjoy it your business would have a business, better reputation so you know the whole idea that even something i actually mentioned this before but just because it's something relevant that happened recently with that uh, ellen DeGeneres show where the whole employees um would have uh barked back at at how poorly they were treated and it kind of badly uh damaged the reputation of of ellen DeGeneres and and the management that was in place there um you know you compare that to a company like ben and jerry's or a company like google where everybody who works there seems to enjoy it and obviously it's much more positive for reputation for the business if your staff enjoy it and industrial relations again is the employer versus the employee relationship I shouldn't say versus it's the employer and the employee relationship so if there's a conflict there uh, that's not great either so motivating staff and motivating them to uh, to get their work done generally leads to more positive relationship um, and obviously with that better communication uh, so that is the quick run through on the next chapter on management motivating I will touch on this again um, there is a good bit of uh, information to uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs and a little bit to McGregor's so we will touch on it because it does come up in questions um, I'll let you know in Google Classroom what I feel you need to take down uh, for slides thanks for listening